Hello, fourth graders. In the last problem, I had you do a bar graph, but I had you do it by hand. In this next set of problems, what I'm going to have you do is actually use the iPad to create a bar graph for you, because that's a pretty useful skill. So in order to do this, you're going to need the app Numbers on your iPad. Um, if you've got it, great. If you don't, you need to make sure you download it out of self-service. So go to self-service, find Numbers, and download it. Once you've got it, I want you to open it up. Uh, it'll give you some screens to go through. It'll say, welcome to numbers. You scroll through those, and you'll get to a screen that looks like this. Now, yours will be blank. Uh, mine already has a few in here. But you're just going to go to here to create a spreadsheet. And you're going to go to this. You get this screen here. You're going to want a blank spreadsheet. Once you get a blank spreadsheet, you're going to get it like this. Now, this gray bar across the top, that's where we're going to have our categories. And this uh, other gray bar here is we're going to give us some of our categories as well. Now, you're going to need data for this. So I'm going to give you some. I've, I've got an example data that I'm going to show you here um, right now. Um, a year ago, I gave my fifth graders a survey where they had, were asked the question, how awesome is Mr. Buto? And they were given a variety of um, options. And amazingly, they all picked really good ones. Um, they picked the most ever. They picked on a scale of 1 to 10. He's a 957.36312. And they picked completely. Amazingly, nobody picked any bad options. Of course, I didn't actually give them any bad options, but, uh, but uh, they didn't pick them anyways, which is pretty nice. What you're going to do is you're going to take this raw data, just like you did in the last problem, and you're going to turn it into a tally chart. I've done that ahead of time. That's right here. So here are my three categories. Here are the numbers of students who did this, who picked each of these, um, 5, 6, and 14. And we're going to take this data and we're going to put it into our spreadsheet. So we're going to keep coming back to this one. So we'll go over to our spreadsheet here. Uh, now, I've actually started this spreadsheet because this takes a while and you don't really need to sit here and watch me do this. Um, so I'm going to actually go over here and I'm going to show you that I, I started this already. And on the top up here goes my categories of um, what they which choices they had. So here are two of my choices. I'm missing my third one, but here are the two, along with the numbers right here. So I'm going to need a third category here, and I'm going to need a label for this one. And um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So in order to put this in here, I'm going to click on the cell right here. And I need a keyboard. In order to do a keyboard, you're going to see down here, here's the keyboard button. I'm going to pop up the keyboard. And then I'm going to double check what it was. Well, oh, that category was the most ever, so I'll pick that. Type it in. The most ever. Um, now, okay, I'm going to hit return here. Now I'm going to put the number in here, which was, I believe, five. Yes, indeed. So back here and we'll put in the number five. Um, so you can hit return and if you hit return it'll go down but if this is a handy little button right here if you hit this button it'll actually go straight over to the next one and it'll give you a whole keyboard. If you've got numbers in here it'll give you a keyboard um, but this tabs feature is really nice if you just want to cycle side instead of going down. If you want to cycle down you hit this button right here and you'll go down, down, down. Okay, but I actually want this cell right here. Um, I need a number of students who picked this. So I'm going to switch keyboards to my ABC and I'm going to call it students. So now I have a complete um, I have a complete spreadsheet that matches the, the tally chart that I had before. All right, now we're going to use the computer to turn um, this into a bar graph. So in order to do that, I need to highlight all of the information that's hit that is right here. So I'm going to go up to this cell right up here in the corner. I'm going to take this blue dot and I'm going to drag it down here so that all of them are highlighted, just like this. Dragging it and sliding it over. Okay, now everything is all highlighted. Now I'm going to go up to this plus button because I want to add something. I want to add um, one of these options. So this is more spreadsheets. I don't care about that. Um, I'm going to look at this one right here, actually, because it actually gives you a bar graph. What do you know? There we go. I have options for different kinds of graphs. Now, you can use horizontal buying bar graphs, line graphs, um, pie charts. What I want is I want a bar graph. Simple, interest, uh, simple, easy to do. Um, I could do a 3D one. That'd be kind of cool. But I'm going to keep it simple right now. If you want to do a 3D one later, you can. 
but I'm going to just do a 2D. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click on this and boom, look at that. It just gave me a bar graph. That's pretty great. Um, I can actually move the bar graph around, pick it up and move it around. Um, I can make it bigger, I can even make it smaller, um, but I'm going to put it right here in the middle like that. Now, there's a few problems with this bar graph. It looks pretty good, but it doesn't look great. It doesn't have all the things that I need to have in order to do this assignment well, because it's missing a few things. What is it missing? Well, it's missing a title. I got this blue bar up here. Wrong computer here. I got this blue bar here. I'll go. Oop, I guess I can't do that all by itself. I got this, but I don't have a title for my graph. Um, so I'm going to do some. I'm going to put that in. I also don't have a label for my horizontal my, down here, and I don't have. This scale is a little funny. I can't have 3.5 or 10.5 students. So I want to mess with this scale and make it a little bit more uh, friendly to my bar graph. So in order to, to modify the bar graph like you're going to need to do, you're going to need to highlight it. And then you're going to go up here to the paintbrush. The paintbrush allows you to edit. So I'm going to click on the paintbrush and I have a variety of options. I can change the color if I want. Stick with the simple one. Um, and I can add a few other things. For instance, I can take away the legend. I don't know that I need that legend there right now. It automatically comes on, but I know that this is student, so I'm actually going to turn that off. But I do need a chart title. I need a title for this because that's one of the requirements. So I'm going to turn on the title, and oh, look, I get title. I'm going to need to change that so it no longer says just title. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to double-click on it. Now I have access to that, so I'm going to call this, the name of my chart is how awesome is Mr. Buto, oops, there we go, how awesome is Mr. Buto, that's the name of my title, Here's it's got these labels on it, but I'm going to play with it anyways. Okay, so that's the chart title. Uh, now I'm going to look at the x-axis options. Now if you know, remember, x is the side-to-side -side here, so that's going to be these. Um, it's got category labels, but I can turn them off. And look, they go away. So I'm going to make sure those are on. Um, and then I'm going to, let's see, looking down here, major grid lines, that's just going to turn off. I don't need that. Tick marks. Mm, I guess those okay. I'll put those on. That's just these little marks right here that show in between. Um, but this is the key one right here, axis name. I need a name for this, right? Category axis. Um, what are we going to call this? What are we going to call this? And again, just like the top one, I'm going to... Uh, let's see, let's call this our awesomeness options. Okay, so these are my awesomeness options right here. Um, and this is the number of students. Okay, so now I'm going to go up to this last one. And I'm going to say, okay, this is the y-axis. So I'm going to go up again to this, and I'm going to go look over at y-axis. Um, I can change the value labels. I can take them on and off. I want those. Um, I don't really have, and I can change this so it goes kind of funny, but I don't really want that. I want it side to side. Um, it's not going to give me an option to put a label here, which is too bad because I would actually like that. Uh, nope, that's not it. But this is actually where I want to go. I want to go to um, value scale. Okay, it's right in the middle right here, value scale, because this is the scale right here. And right now the scale is four steps. So there's one step, two steps, three steps, four steps. But in four steps, it gives it to me this really funny number here. Um, so maybe, what's what happens when I, oops, wrong computer, make it five. Aha, there we go, that's a little better. But Again, my numbers aren't very great. How, how can you have 2.8 people? I want my numbers to be solid. Ah, there we go. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. There we go. That's good, good numbers. I could actually go up to, oh, nope, that's decimals again, decimals again, decimals again. Keep that still decimals. Oh, that would work, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I kind of liked it though when it was a little simpler. I kind of liked it when it was just 
every two. Now I can actually also set a maximum value. Notice that our maximum value right now is 14. This one goes all the way up. But I could actually change this and I could make it, oh, let's say 16. Now if I do that, oh no, this is all gone again, isn't it? Because this is this number 16 has to, ah, so let's try, what happens if I go to 8? What do you know? This number divided, 16 divided by 8 is 2, so these are going to go up by 2 each time. I kind of like that a little better because that allows me to see, um, I just like a little blank space up at the top. All right, now I have a nice chart. I have a title. I have a label at the bottom. I have what are these scales. I have a scale that makes sense on the side here. I know that this is five because it's in between four and six. Um, I have all those things that I need. So now I can take a screenshot of my chart and I can put it into um, my option or my turn in place in GoFormative or Schoology. This is what I'm gonna want you to do. I want you to Take, it, take the information, turn it into a tally chart, turn your tally chart into a spreadsheet, make the spreadsheet, sorry, make the bar graph right here, modify the bar graph so that it looks the way you want it to look, and then you've got yourself um, something that you can turn in. Good luck and have fun.